so this is this is my first uh, SEO SEM meetup. It's called Search. My first Search meetup. So it's interesting for me. It's great to see a really big turnout. Uh, by way of introduction, my name is Dave Castle. I'm a director here at Resolution and the national head of SEO. Uh, it's a big title. A lot of fun. Um, I've been asked to introduce myself and give a little bit of a rundown of who I am and how I came to be where I am. It's a boring story, so I'll give you the highlights. Uh, and then a little bit about sort of who we are here at uh, Resolution. Uh, and then essentially run into the topic at hand, which I'm actually kind of excited about. It's for me the whole SEM versus SEO debate, allies versus enemies, however you'd like to break that down, for me actually um, kind of nicely highlights the mindset change that I had from just getting into SEO to sort of where I am now. So on that note, uh, I started as a web dev. I had absolutely nothing to do with search at all, not in the traditional sense. Um, had an affinity for code, absolutely loved it, got right into the detail. After a little while I found that when I was building new sites for clients, uh, you'd sort of have a look at the big G, Google, uh, and see what's going on. You're like, well, hang on, I just made this really pretty website for one of my clients. Why aren't they ranking anywhere? What's going on? What's the story here? And so I started digging and scratching away at the surface and found this enormous topic of SEO. SEM, of course, as well, but SEO piqued my interest because it's a game with rules, and a game with rules I can win. Um, so I started having a play around with some of the clients' websites we were building and saw some really positive results of that and sort of fleshed that out into a product, built a team. Uh, it was a very interesting time for me. I was about uh, 23 or thereabouts. Uh, short time later, um, I started to outgrow the company that I was working with. I was working with a small agency. You're dealing with a lot of sort of small business. I was looking for the next challenge. And for me, that was enterprise. I wanted to go right to the top. Why wouldn't you? Uh, found an opening here, resolution. Had a few chats to people and, and had a few interviews and got tested and tested and tested and tested. Uh, <laughs> and then landed a role here as a manager. And sort of the rest is history. I've learned a lot and I've, I've grown to the, the role I'm in today, which is great. I have the privilege here of working with some incredibly talented people that make me look good. And I like looking. Now, <laughs> a little bit about resolution and who we are. So, um, I won't do death by PowerPoint, but I just want to run through. We are a full service digital marketing brand. We operate within quite a large umbrella. Sorry, mate. <laughs> we operate within quite a large umbrella. Um, we're working alongside a lot of media agencies. We're working on quite a few uh, high profile clients. And we're essentially the digital arm of the family. So, everything from uh, website builds and designs, strategy, execution, conversion rate optimization. Have a chat to Miles up the back there. He heads that up. He's also a wonderful chat. You can't shut him up. Uh, <laughs> and we also do a lot of social and, and everything like that. Um, we're quite a large business. Uh, we've got about 200 staff around Australia. Uh, we're currently sitting on six offices and the fun part for me is that I'm working with the within the realm of about 38 SEO specialists. I think last count was, was just over the 40 mark. So there's a lot of talent there for me to be able to pull together and, and make some really fun things happen. Now one thing I do want to point out is that we're always looking for ways to give back to the industry and this sort of thing and, and getting everyone, everyone together and sort of involving ourselves in these meetups is definitely something that's always been on our radar but we've also done, uh, we have an annual conference that we get a lot of our clients out to um, and we might see if we can't throw some new bikes your way over the next year or so as it happens, but we tend, tend to touch on a lot of the, um, the core topics and what's happening in the industries and everything like that. It's, it's actually a really good event. Last year was somewhere in the region of uh, 500 uh, attendees or thereabouts. Uh, and then we're also uh, an MFA, MFA 5 Plus certification partner. So I actually, uh, last year, the MFA decided that they were going to digitise, uh, Media Federation of Australia, I'm sorry, decided they were going to digitise all of their training. And so I went in and I did two days of uh, recording where I basically sat behind a table and talked about SEO, uh, which I don't mind if I'm perfectly honest. 
<laughs> but it means that uh, anyone that joins an MFA uh, business or an MFA partner's business uh, from now on when they do their SEO modules, they get to look at my beautiful face for a few hours. Lucky them. <laughs> um, one thing that I did want to touch on, uh, and, and I have been asked to sort of talk about a little bit of industry news and stuff like that, but uh, I'm sure we're all quite across sort of what's happening. But one thing I did want to touch on is what's happening with uh, JumpShot. For those of you that have heard of it or have dealt with it before, JumpShot's a massive click stream uh, data aggregator, worked through the, the vast toolbar on browsers. And so that allowed for a mammoth amount of automation in marketing, audience building, and everything like that. Now, uh, they had a bit of bad press and they've shut doors. The interesting thing for me and what I'm watching for is what impact that's going to have on a lot of tools that all of us will use in our day to day, such as our SEM Rush, and uh, it's already impacting tools out there like Bitwise and things like this. Um, one thing Ben Wild wanted me to mention, and I have to give him big ups for this, is uh, we know that this sort of thing happens from time to time, and so we actually have a uh, a tool set that we build in house here at Resolution called Flight Deck. Um, and we do this because we know what data is going into that tool and we can trust the accuracy of what's going on. And through Benoit's help, who essentially runs or heads up the team and sort of works off the side on all of that, we're tracking somewhere in the realm of about uh, a million keywords worth of data at the moment. It's, it's quite a lot of fun to play with. Uh, not available to the industry just yet, but watch this space. <laughs> Can we take it with us? <laughs> uh, and then the other source. What's that, sorry? Is it open source? Uh, no, it's not. Uh, and uh, one other quick thing I want to mention while I have a, uh, a room that's relatively SEO favorite. Who's, who's an SEO first and foremost? All right, we have a good number. SEM? Who doesn't identify as either? <laughs> so for the SEOs in the room, we know that uh, uh, as of March, Google's going to start indexing a whole heap of data that uh, our clients might not want indexed, so the, the nofollow stuff that's coming in. They're crawling everything now anyway, and then they're about to make a decision of what they want to index or not, so we need to keep an eye on what's happening in that. Now, the topic of the evening, which is essentially SEM versus SEO, allies or enemies. Now I mentioned, uh, when I started in SEO, uh, I had a very sort of one track mindset about the whole thing. It was very easy for me to sit there and say, um, you know, if they're, gonna, if they're gonna increase their spending brand, if they're gonna upgrade everything they're spending, that's cannibalizing my traffic, uh, and then my job becomes harder. Obviously as I've grown as a professional, as I've understood how search works a little bit more, especially working in the enterprise space, that mindset has changed a little. It's changed a lot. Um, and what you find is to be successful in the enterprise space, how many of you are working on enterprise, big enterprise side level clients at the moment, good size? If you aren't yet and you have the opportunity to do it, by all means do it, because you learn how to operate so much, so differently. When you're working on small clients, you can execute stuff really easily. There's no global mandates, there's no restrictions, you can just get everything done. When you're working enterprise, you have to learn efficiency, and not just efficiency as in like, I can do this project faster, because what's an efficiency for me might not be an efficiency for you. And so you have to find efficiencies of scale, or God forbid, efficiencies across channels. And so in this instance, you know, when we're talking about SEO and SEM, the two can play off against each other really well, and, and you can get massive benefits. And we've worked with uh, automo an automotive manufacturer where we actually did a whole heap of testing. We do testing across all of our clients that run multi-channel because we're always looking for the best way to, to spend, the best marketing mix model, which is the current uh, uh, jargon that everyone's sort of leaning on, but we're always looking for the most optimal way to operate. And uh, we had an automotive uh, client and we did a whole heap of testing on it and it was actually incredibly good fun because we were trying to find at a keyword level if there's a line you can draw um, in your sort of spend where you get the best of both worlds. You don't get cannibalized traffic in SEO, cannibalized traffic in SEO, and you maximize your spend, uh, or you maximize your traffic base of your spend. What we found was uh, it's actually completely different for that, for that industry. And we found that for the mobile space uh, where your, uh, where your, what's the word I'm looking for, your, your, uh, 
doesn't matter. <laughs> where we basically, you, every, everything's critical. Every little position is critical in mobile, right? You're dealing with such a small screen. There is a high propensity to scroll, but organic listings in particular are just so far down the page now. That's the reality. Uh, things are always changing. So what we found was spend, especially on brand, had to always be there for this brand to constantly pull in that traffic. But from the desktop side, if someone had come through paid once, we could actually turn that off completely and pull them in through organic every time after that. And so all of the efficiency, all the saving there, we're able to pull back in and throw back into the SEM channel to, to do better across more of the generic. So we're always trying to find ways to play them off, always trying to find ways to make them work as an ally. And so on that note, I'll hand off to our speakers. First time I'd like to thank residents for putting this on, for hosting it tonight, for buying the food in the room. Uh, absolutely fantastic. Uh, my background is not on the edge of buying, but bits and babies have started this and they're on the across the SEM. And so I thought it was an interesting kind of conjunction to, to present here tonight. So I'd like to introduce Dejan, whose background is SEO. What he doesn't know about SEO isn't worth knowing. And some people might say, well, he does know anything worth knowing because it's SEO. Who cares? So Good point to you. All right. <laughs> all right. Use the mic, right? Even though, just folks, it doesn't work. It's just for show. It's, yeah, it's uh, it's for the live stream. So, very nice intro, Rick. How are you going, everybody? David, very, uh, very interesting intro. Like, you very made, touched a few points about the dump, jump shot data, which... Quite like. A um, bit about me. So my name is Dan Ladanovsky. Um, been doing SEO since late 20, 2007. Um, built affiliate sites that got millions of visitors a month. Um, currently run like a development site in Sydney. Ranks number one. Um, yeah, it's a bunch of credentials. Also manage some enterprise clients of Prosperity Media. Shout out James. Um, bit of context about like this whole stream, right? So SEO versus SEM. I thought about it and Whilst I'm definitely in the camp of SEO and our agency, it's primarily 95% SEO, maybe 5% SEM. Um, I do believe both are needed like to complement a marketing strategy. I don't think you should do one or the other. I think there's a very good case for having both. Um, I think each like um, channel supplements each other depending on the web website marketing lifecycle, which in the website is at. Um, generally speaking, your PPC spend should go down over time as the SEO gradually rises. Um, this is obviously different with enterprise, but you know, fresh sites, you know, mid-tier sites, you should generally see a decrease in PPC spend um, as the SEO kind of like kicks into boot. But this is a battle and SEO is the one you want to pick. Sorry, I had to do that. <laughs> all right, the difference, right? So SEO, what is it? I'm sure you, most of you all know. Organic results at the bottom, paid at the top. As they, <laughs> we'll see about that. Um, so, like, where are we looking at? How, where's the clicks coming from? So, um, we got some jump shot data, um, as found by Spark Toro. Shout out Rand Fishkin. Zero clicks is getting crazy. It's starting to get scary. Like, it's over fifty percent of all searches, and you know, this is happening because of you know, um, featured markup, you know, various answers that are popping up, featured snippets, etc. What we're working with here is we've got 45% of searches going to organic and 4.5% going to uh, paid. So there's about a 10 to 1 um, ratio here in who gets what search traffic. How do you rank higher in each respective channel? Well, I think most of you all know. Bear, bear in mind, PPC, the name of the game is who spends most wins. Generally speaking, I'm sure Esteban will elaborate there. SEO, well, how do, you, how do you win in SEO? Well, really SEO breaks down into three core elements. You've got your technical SEO, you've got your link acquisition or off-site SEO, and you've got your on-site SEO. Um, main, main things about on-site SEO, you've got you know, making sure content is matching user, user intent. You've got other things that also matter, like you know, you've got like TF-IDF analysis, you've got natural language processing with the introduction of BERT, and you've got a whole host of other things. Um, You've got relevant structured data, which is becoming ever more prevalent. Um, you want to, for technical, you want to ensure, you know, the website has a good solid foundation. You want to make sure, you know, the page speed is quite quick. I mean, you know, you log into Search Console and, you know, what Search Console considers a fast site is below one second. Um, I don't know how, I guess, you know, <laughs> how obvious or, I don't know, like one second for an enterprise site on that's on legacy, it's, 
it's quite difficult to do, especially when you know you you've got a massive uh, you've got a massive kind of like things in the way that make sure like yeah. Um, you've got the page, so the page load speed, and you've got the three kings, right? So going back to content, you've got the URL slug, which is very, very important. You've got the H1 tag, and you've got the page title tag. You want to make sure that whatever keyword you're ranking for is in there. All these things are important. And the one of the, well, it's probably one of the biggest factors, uh, backlinks, right? So, you know, a lot of, there'd be a lot of arguments saying, you know, links don't matter, right? It's 2020, links don't matter. Content is king. I mean, get any competitive vertical, do a Google search in you know the insurance sector, the finance sector, and you'll quickly see that there is a clear trend, the highest DR or highest UR pages are on top. So here's just some organic SERP results. Some things you can't do with PPC that you can do with SEO. So you know, you've got like site links, you've got table schema that's pulled out. How you get this is essentially what you're doing is you're creating a table and you're using the TI and TD cells. Um, and Google is pulling that data in. Dep it depends on the niche. It works from my site. It doesn't work everywhere. Um, you've got event schema. You've got product schema. You've got FAQ schema. I mean, these are all things that like um, you can do in organic. And a quick tip, like I like to always give a tip every time I talk. So you can drop down in the FAQ schema. And a lot of people have this question of, okay, like how do you get a HTML link in the schema. So when you're actually creating the FAQ page schema, so inside you'll see normally when you start the schema, there'll be like two brackets. The way you actually put a link in is you use H A H ref and you only use one dash or one apostrophe. That way you actually insert a link inside the FAQ page schema. So thought that one might be quite interesting for you guys. Critic schema, thought it's quite interesting. I mean, this is data all pulled in from um, from your you know structured data. So you got um, you got who have you got the Empire and Common Sense Media putting in the markup and it's being pulled directly. And of course, everything you see normally on these types of schema is shown at the top of the page. So you've got fact check schema. I haven't seen this one too much. I pulled this one out of um, out of the Google Structured Data Testing tool, but yeah, I think it's quite interesting. You know, um, I saw one came up as is the world flat and there'll be a fact check. It's real interesting. Um, you got course schema, so that's just pulling various courses. That's just using the at course um, schema. And one thing that's big right now is featured snippets. I mean, this is an example of a list, but um, there's you know other types like table schema, table snippets, etc. People also ask, is the one thing as well? I mean, like you know, if you've got like longer form content, like normally you would, you can get ranking. And the people also ask if you do it strategically. So benefits over SEO versus SEM. You're going to like this one, Esteban. So once you stop doing SEO work, the traffic will continue. So it's not a tap. You're going to come in and, you know, the second you turn off your campaign in AdWords, essentially no more traffic. SEO, if you do stop the work, you will see a continuation of the traffic. Sure, you know, if you have, you're in a competitive vertical um, you know, and your competitors are continuing their kind of SEO work, you will see a slight decline over time, but it's there to stay. Organic results do not get blocked by ad blockers. See, I mean, most people these days do have an ad blocker. In I mean, put your hands up if you have an ad blocker installed on your computer. Half the room. So that takes that takes more or less. Oh, uh, it's <laughs> debatable, <laughs> debatable. But it just goes to show that how much traffic advertisers are losing based on these plugins, like that you plug in straight into Chrome or Brave or any other browser. Uh, nearly 80% of users ignore the paid ad in search results. People tend to prefer organic results. I mean, put your hands up if you, when you do a Google search, you ignore the paid listings. And now put your hands up if you work in the SEM field and you ignore the paid listings. That says a lot, doesn't it? I think people, you understand that you're there, you're paid to be there, and you're probably not worthy of being there as an organic listing. So 32% of consumers recognize that links are paid advertisers but don't click on them. So I think the market perception is, although it's interesting, I mean, we all saw the latest changes where, you know, Google came out on desktop about a month ago and they put the fav icons um, and the ad um, on the search listings and they quickly took the fav icons off because a normal user, when they were using and they're scrolling down, they couldn't notice the difference and there was a lot of, there was a lot of clicks on ads because people didn't know there were ads and it was obviously probably producing a bad quality score. Um, so yeah, it's, it's very interesting that they removed the changes straight away after one week. Organic SERP uh, result click-throughs for long-tail keywords are about three to 5% higher. So 
I think when people are actually looking for something that's a bit more in depth, people are looking for something, you know, three, four, five plus words. Um, generally speaking, there isn't really a high quality um, PPC kind of result that you're going to get. Normally, you are going to have to go into kind of the organic realm. And to be honest, there probably isn't as many advertisers. It's very hard to do that type of thing on scale as well. Um, and also, you know, with the introduction of algorithms like BERT, when Google's starting to understand, you know, um, entities and semantics and sentiment, it's starting to know like what to put there, which is very, very interesting. So 91% of all pages um, don't get any traffic on Google. One of the biggest reasons due to backlinks could be because they're creating content in a very competitive vertical. Um, it could be that the content's not low quality. Could be um, various amount of reasons, but yeah, it's a, it's a big thing that if you are going to be creating content, like you do at least want to make sure there is an element of keyword research going into it that you actually know it's worth kind of ranking for, and uh, and there's actually worthy to make because you actually at the end of the day you want traffic that converts and then creates business. So that's the whole point of SEO, right? So in 2019, you know, 52 percent of traffic comes from mobile, 45 percent of desktop, and you know this is really important because of Google's mobile-first algorithm that got rolled out in the mid 2018. It's important that you know when we are building out like sites, it's mobile-first. So images return 22 percent of this one. I actually found interesting because if you think about it, like PPC, you've got you're sure you've got like Google Shopping and you know those elements, but Image carousels are actually surprisingly coming up on a lot more listings. Like I thought that was quite interesting and that's obviously going to tailor and play into organic search going forward. So where to buy and near me queries have grown over 200%. This is tailoring right to local SEO. Um, I think I'm not too sure if I put it in here, but it's like 70% of people like within the region go to the nearest place in five miles when they're sure they're going to buy something. So it's really important. 70% um, of marketers see SEO as more effective than PPC. I like this. This is, this is the real gun shot, Esteban, I'm sorry to say, mate. But um, yeah, this is data source out of Databox. And it goes to show, I think, like the, the days of SEO just being the forgotten marketing channel are coming to an end. It's starting to be known that it is a mainstream marketing channel and a relatively great one if in, when you're talking in ROI terms. So variations of different types of SERP listings. I took this one uh, from Jumpshot. David, good call on the um, mentioning that they're going to uh, not be continuing the data, which is going to be very interesting because a lot of these big tools do kind of rely on Jumpshot data. Um, but we've got here that with the listings that we're getting on organic, 94% are going to have HTTPS in their title, um, in their URL structure, sorry. 85% of results are producing a people also ask, which is insane. Shows how many uh, kind of like queries are informational. So we've got 41% are producing a knowledge panel, 40% are producing reviews, 39% are producing some sort of a local result, 22 are showing a video carousel. Uh, we can also add the 22% that are showing an image carousel and 16 are producing featured snippets. To be honest, that's only increasing. It's almost like every update that's coming out, like the January core update that just happened, like I just noticed more featured snippets on the queries I was doing that weren't there before. So yeah, it's, um, it's quite interesting. And uh, the biggest one, SEO has 20 times more opportunity than mobile on desktop. Boom. <laughs> Thank you, peeps. Appreciate it. Thank you, Dijon. Thank you very much for that very interesting overview on, on SEO. Uh, so for, for those of you who don't know me, I'm Esteban Martinez from Addicted to PPC. I've been in the digital marketing space since 2002, initially back from the UK, uh, where I was working for one of the largest travel companies in the e-commerce e space. Um, and then off the back of that, then set up my own agency, predominantly focusing in the travel sector in PPC. Um, but then at, at, at that time in 2008, uh, there was then also a big rise in SEO. So I went into that, um, then social media and email marketing. But ultimately, it always comes down to, you know, what is your client looking for? What is their business that's th they're, that they're trying to attract more customers in? Understanding both your clients really well and understanding the end consumer well is really critical to any form of digital marketing, whether it's SEO, SEM, 
or you know if you're doing you know social or any other channel so with that space i think obviously you know if we look at how the SERPs has evolved over time um you know google's ever more prevalent than they once were back in 2002 when i started you know yahoo was the major player back then so google was obviously trying to ramp up and and, and leapfrog it to, to the juggernauts they are today but the fundamentals are still the same depending regardless of which uh, camp you're in regardless of which what country you're from or what industry if you're B2B or B2C uh, and being clear on you know understanding the USPs and amplifying that message out is going to make a difference so the websites obviously are where you know consumers are going to go to regardless of how they get there but obviously going through this evening of SEO or SEM just want to go into you know how has that really changed so when I talk to clients um, and go through various uh, pitches with different businesses, really trying to understand, you know, what is their mindset around SEO, SEM? What is how digitally savvy um, are they in that space about their consumers, about the industry, uh, and their own data? Because data is key. And whilst there are the, the different views on this, I think you know SEO is more of an art form, um, and PPC and SEM is more of a science. And the reason for that is because whilst the SEO landscape has changed and is continually changing, just so is at SEM, the main difference is you can't really see uh, what the correlation is, and, and does correlate the co correlation doesn't always sh show uh, causation. So in that, whether you're building links or you've updated your website or you've made it faster or you've changed server, you can't categorically say that this main change saw an increase in traffic, an increase in activity, or an increase in sales. And to this, you know, whilst we're using Google Analytics nine times out of ten as that measurement uh, in terms of a source of truth, with Google Ads, you can generally say, okay, well, we can clearly see these are the changes we've rolled out in terms of a budget, targeting, ad messaging, or new campaigns. So there's more data to kind of show the, the link inside that, as well as Google's obviously ever expanding in, inside that space, which is obviously why um, there are less tools kind of really showing the clear visibility from a Google extent uh, under the Google badge. Um, and I'll, I'll go into that in just more detail. This was a slide that came out on LinkedIn just two weeks ago. This is actually quite interesting, I thought, because this, this was actually from, from SEMrush. Um, and, and their kind of snapshot takeaway was that most small businesses use PBC as a prop up to kind of uh, accelerate just to get the, the ball rolling, get initial inertia for business. And then off the back of that, then they need to time that up quite quickly then with, with social, PR, but really with, with SEO. Now, whilst I agree with, with those in principle, I don't agree with, with the fact that PBC sees the diminishing returns. We're in, I don't know, say, uh, halfway through or maybe two two thirds of the way for the timeline. So if you are seeing PBC dropping off like a cliff, you know, within two three months, then there's definitely something wrong in that space. And you know, as um, everyone else is saying, even at enterprise level, they are doing PBC in that space to see continual growth, uh, have brand visibility, and continue uh, get their brand out there to attract uh, more customers. Measurement's always key. So you know, w whatever space you're in, whatever camp you're in, doing you know programmatic, doing display, outreach, email marketing, always making sure you have clear measurement from day one is going to be fundamental to, to, to go from I think it was this to I can qualify, say that these made the uh, cause and effects in those areas. As Dijon kind of touched through, you know, Google is now 20, over, over 20 years old now, and the SERPs has changed a lot in the last decade alone. So, you know, especially in, in the Google ad space, where initially we had ads on the right-hand side, um, and, and it was quite clear what advert was. You could quite clearly see that. Obviously, today, you know, this is very different with different snippet extensions and, and FAQs, and as Dijon was saying, that, you know, the ads are blended almost to an invisible level that you can't really see. So there's a lot of change that are happening in both both arenas, or SEM and SEO. But really looking at what is the, you know what does the industry's uh, reputation have with them, and, and how do your actual clients perceive SEO, and how do your clients perceive SEM? Because that's very very important. Because whilst you know half the room here, are, or more than half the room is SEO, and the other half of uh, a third is uh, PPC, going well. It's all good and well, us being experts, but if your client doesn't really know this, your client's only going to see what they hear in the media and, ha and what they hear um, in our news articles. And it does seem to be, from an SEO perspective, unfortunately, they have this kind of uh, this mixed kind of cliche of different kind of hats in that space. 
And what I mean by this is it's kind of tainted through the, the, the black hat strategies and grey hats and, and the whole debate around what is black hat, what is grey hat, what is white hat. And, and whilst this was you know, very, very prevalent in, in the early 2000s and, and uh, early 2010s, obviously that has changed and there's still a whole degree of like saying, well, do these things still work? And, it's, and it's not, there's no real source of truth from Google saying this is what you need to do. Google's obviously going to be very quiet in that space because, again, Google makes not more than 95% of their, their revenue and their profits in Google Ads. So, of course, they're not going to say these are the clear fundamentals for SEO. But, you know, on the flip side, what, what does that look like from an SEM perspective? There is no black hat, white hat, grey hat SEM activity. It's all, are you a partner? Are you accredited? How much money are you spending with Google? And Google is very, you know, very clear. Obviously, this is the beast that we, that we all work within. Um, and obviously, you know, they're making this very visible in terms of sharing knowledge, how to become accredited, how to um, follow best practice, how the you know devices are changing, and all the other various elements. So from that pers perspective, you know, clients, uh, end clients, are obviously going to go, okay, I want to work more in that space. And not to say that SEO is not important whatsoever, but really looking at what is the the kind of story, or what are other people and brands hearing about uh, the differences between SEO and, and SEM. So really, it's the case that whatever area you sit in. Continually, it's about educating your client about best practice, knowing who your consumer is, understanding data and showing causation as opposed to correlation. And you know, as I was saying, with digital marketing and, and all forms of business, there's, there's a continual change of evolution, um, both you know, in, in life and business, and obviously Google is no exception to that. So this graph, I'm sure many of you may have seen, obviously from Google Analytics, um, and obviously you know, you're going to see some, some, in this instance, traffic has dropped. And th there could be two, two reasons all this, depending on how you look at it, depending if you're in the SEM space or in the SEO space. Uh, and for those of you who've got sharp eyes, you can see this is April 2012, you know, those in the, in the SEO space, we probably go, okay, well this is probably an SEO element due to the penguin that happened at that, at that point. Whereas this is rarely going to be seen in, in, in the form of an SEM. And the only reason, the only two differences in this space is that if you're in, S, in the SEM arena and you see this kind of drop in your, in your data, it's mainly going to be because your budget's dropped off. Whereas if it's in the SEO space, whilst you can be doing everything right and, and you've followed best practice and you've done all the, the white hat SEO activity, th if, this, if, if Google rolls out an update, then you're, that you're at their mercy and you can't really get out of this very quickly. So just trying to see you know, how people view this graph in terms of, well, can we, can we either buy a way out of it in terms of an SEM space? Or is it a case that, the, that, the, um, that our budgets run out or we need, we need to do more to, to grow and, and get more visibility in that space? Google, obviously, ever changing, ever evolving, and you know, as Dijon was saying, you know, it is kind of the king of testing, testing, learning, as all agencies and, and companies need to be in that space. So here, you can really see in the last 13 years or so how has as the SERPs in in terms of a paid advert uh, evolved and changed. Um, so again, it's really blended. It's, it's almost you know invisible to the naked eye, and even marketers are now clicking on it by accident because it is so um, it, it's camouflaged in the SERPs. And you know, really seeing well, does it actually work? And uh, in terms of the SEM space, and this is uh, you know the, the, the stats from from Google's ad revenue. And whilst this isn't a proxy of success, it is a proxy of obviously how um, how big Google is growing. And especially when over 95% of their revenue is coming from ads. So yes, the, the SERPs is becoming more competitive. Regardless if you're in social media or whatever area you sit in, it is getting much harder to get your audience's attention, retain that, and bring them to your brand. So it, it doesn't really matter what machine or, or what mechanism they're using, you know, getting into your website is the most important thing that you need to do in 2020 and beyond. So how you actually get into the, to, to your website is not, is not really critical. It's more a case on what you're doing to retain them and what are you doing to, to capture their intent to make them come back to your brand. Um, also looking at, you know, with, within both of these, these arenas, really looking at how can we uh, clarify and obviously clean up uh, both, both SEM and SEO. And when I refer to like chlorine in the pool, then you know th there has predominantly been from that black hat, white hat uh, process, uh, a lot of spam that has been a, a legacy uh, kind of um, tainted the industry. So really, you know, with all of it's like a it's like a whole zoo of of, of Google's kind of uh, arena where you've got your penguin, panda, hummingbird, and, and bird, and everything under the sun that's come through. And this is continually, you know, derailing or knocking back 
you know, SEO productivity. Obviously, those who are doing it right and those who are following best practice from day one probably aren't going to be impacted to the same way. But again, with clients going through different agencies every two, three years or so, there is going to be cases where the clients you're working with, they may have worked with either shady freelancers or agencies and, and been burnt in the past. Clients will always get burnt in the past and always it's a case of continually educating them, continually advocating best practice and continually case studying success. That's more important on both SEM and SEO. But really, when we're looking at you know how 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 has SE, SEM really changed, and really the the foundations have still been the same. So whilst you know the the Google SERPs has evolved to a degree, and there's there's more there's you know smart ads and smart campaigns and smart shopping, that the principles of of like measuring and monitoring and growing uh, are still ever the same as they were back when Google started. And it's not as disruptive as it has been um, having that turbulent route through the SEM landscape. landscape. And then just kind of ending on, on kind of a quote, really. So I think both in, in the case of digital marketing, foundations are really key. Uh, advocating best practice is critical. Uh, so this is a great quote I found the other day where um, I'm just saying that you know, a house must be built on a solid foundation if it is to last. And I think this is very much the same for business. Um, the same principle applies to man. Otherwise, he too will sink into the soft ground and become soiled up by the world of illusion. So really going, okay, well, you know, what are you doing to, um, to make sure that all of your marketing, not just one area, but the entire end to end from your business to your consumer, that, that has a solid foundation and there's a reason as to why you're different, as the reason as to why that they should be speaking to your business, speaking to your, your team and buying from you, that that's critical. And then making sure that you have best practice in both SEM and SEO.